let's do this, Johanna. So Johanna recorded a portion of one of our workouts and she put it to some really upbeat music and things and you put it on, was it your Facebook page? Instagram. or in, on, on Instagram. And she talked about some of her clients of which I and, and my husband are one. And she talks about some of the great strides that we made in the past year. And she said, my great stride was that I didn't gripe about it as much as I did originally. Because I used to, as darling as Johanna is, I really used to dread her coming and torturing me. Yeah. And what did you, what did I used to call you? The executioner. The executioner. <laughs> and the other day we worked out for the first time after Christmas because I had been sick over the holidays and I was so sore that I could hardly move. But sore in a good way because I'd been working out. So it's all, I've you know done some things this year about the beginning of the new year, habit formation, habit change, ways that we can slightly um, on the margins every day, make little changes to improve our appearance, to improve our health and our wellness. And Johanna and I have been working out for, we just figured it out about a year. Yeah. yeah. And what's nice is I can keep track of my husband because she also trains him and he can keep track of me and we can be kind of sort of competitive with one another. Okay, but who yeah. really works out harder? <laughs> By far. <laughs> By far, I work out harder. So, okay, so what we're going to do today, and by the way, uh, Johanna is a graduate student, but you also, she also trains people. She's been a professional trainer for how long mm, now? Over two years. Yeah, over two years. She is great. She not only helps me in hubs, but she helps um, several friends of mine. And if you want contact information from her about getting her to train you privately, then just put a comment below and I can give you her contact information or she, they can reach you where? On Instagram, uh, I think it's Johanna underscore Lynn underscore 1200. Okay, if you, and, and again, if you can't remember that, yeah. just give me your information and I will put you in touch with her because um, she really has helped both Hubs and myself up our games a little bit and just work out harder. I've always worked out regularly, but I can't say that I ever have worked out hard. And what Johanna does is she pushes us to be a better version of ourselves. Kind of, sort of. So I, if it, I, feels, it feels good after after you're done. No, it does feel good, yeah. good after we're done. And the nice thing is about ha working out with a workout buddy or a trainer is we can visit a lot because it's not always great to be really mindful and present when you're trying not to be mindful and present when you're doing something that kind of hurts or that's boring or that's repetitive. And so, so uh, Stuart is chuckling, but isn't that the truth? I mean we talk and we can kind of visit and I think that's kind of important. So one thing I have noticed since I've started working out is, and probably one of the very first things that I said was I wanted to kind of improve my core muscles. And so we focus a lot on core and just what I kind of consider life skills. So in that vein, I'm, I'm going to I'm going to start out by going back in time. So in 2000, I, I tore a disc in my back. And because of that, I've always had a lower back that's compromised. I, Johanna knows that. She's very good about being careful so I don't hurt myself further. Um, but the other thing that I have done for a very, very long time is routinely I do, and these were taught to me by my physical therapist, and, and she's going to kind of walk us through this, but I do stretches every single morning before I even get out of bed that help me with not compromising my lower back, help me when I work in the garden, but quite frankly, just help me when I'm working around the house, when I'm doing laundry, when I'm doing that kind of thing. And so what, what, what we've done is just try to kind of um, improve on those things and help me stay fit and in good shape and maybe a little bit tauter and a little bit more toned. So that said, I'm being way too wordy. I'm gonna get on the mat and I'm gonna show you, these are the stretches I do every morning and I don't know the technical terms for them or what muscles I'm gonna stretch. So Johanna, you're gonna, you are gonna take over and mm. kind of just tell me what, what it is I'm doing and how that's helping my lower back. So remember, when I start this out, when I start my day, I am still in bed. I haven't even gotten up for my first cup of coffee yet. 
I, so I haven't even moved. I haven't gone to the bathroom, I haven't gone to do anything. So remember, I'm just lying down flat on my back. Now, when I'm in my bed, Johanna, I don't have a microphone yes. <laughs> sticking, yes. sticking out of my back. But this is the first one I do, and if you would just kind of describe what I'm doing and why I'm doing it and why it takes pressure off of my lower back. Okay. So this is a hamstring stretch, okay? She's stretching all this backside of her leg here. Um, it's gonna loosen that up. Tight hamstrings, tight hamstrings will correlate with back pain sometimes, so that's a good stretch to do. Uh, you wanna keep this leg as straight as possible. She's very flexible. So if your goal is to at least get to 90 degrees, she's going a little bit past that, which is great. And every day when I do this, I do try to kind of straighten my leg as much as I can and I do kind of pull on it a little bit when I'm doing it. And actually, when you're just waking up, it feels, I think it feels kind yeah. of good. Yeah. So I'm doing that with both legs. And there's no right time limit to do each stretch, but you know you can hold yeah. it at 30 seconds, 45 seconds, a minute, whatever feels good. And what, when it really feels good for me is after I have worked out hard with you and my muscles are really sore and these yeah. stretches feel so good. They kind of hurt, but in a good way. Okay, this is the other one that I find absolutely invaluable. So again, remember that you're on your bed. And so in most cases, at least one yeah. leg is gonna hang over the side of the bed. So what am I gonna do now? So I'll call this a laying crossover stretch, okay. Um, ideally, her foot should be all the way down on the ground if the treadmill is not in the way as possible. She's going to open up this arm, look towards this way if you're with your head, rotate it this way. Yep. She should feel a big stretch in her back, in her hip, in her glute, all those muscles right there. She would feel really nice. And, and I, when I used to do these, before I started working out with Johanna, I would just go kind of like this, and I would just kind of plop this leg over the side of the bed, and I would get a good stretch through here. But then Johanna taught me how to enhance that by putting my arm out this way and stretching, and I feel a good stretch not only through, is this my glute, my glute hip, glute, hip. hip and glute, but I also can feel it in my neck. Yeah. And I can also feel it through here. And as I garden more, my shoulders are increasingly, I think, sometimes stressed. So, and again, it f just feels good. I haven't even gotten up yet. I might still be kind of sleepy. So then I've done it on this side, and then I'm also doing it on that side. And boy, I can really tell we worked out this glute the other day, Johanna, because boy, yeah. that really hurts in a good way. So already I'm kind of loosening myself up and even if the next thing that I'm going to do is move the laundry from my washing machine into my dryer, I think it's important that I've yeah. loosened up those, those, um, those muscles that, because by loosening up these muscles, I'm not putting so much pressure on my lower back. Okay, now what do we call this? Again, these were all ones my physical therapist taught me how to do after I tore the disc in my back, after I was healed, and then Johanna has just kind of enhanced them. So what do, you, what do we call this? Spinal twist. So what I found when, whenever I hurt my back, it's because I have twisted in a funny way when I hadn't properly warmed up, especially when I'm pruning in shrubs or things like that. This is definitely has been an issue with me before. So you I'm, do these a little differently than I do. It's okay. fine, but I would I cross it over and I put my elbow on the outside. You put your elbow like this. Yep. And then I look over this shoulder all the way towards the back, pushing with my elbow into that knee. Yeah. And I guess it kind of helps you move it in different and, and directions. Like yeah, your just neck, your stretch so, again. So what I need to do then, and she does it so much more gracefully. <laughs> She's so long and lean, but it also kind of helps you in both directions. Yeah. And I do that one. And again, I haven't even gotten out of bed yet. And then I'll do, did I just do this one? Yeah. Is this you one I just both. did? Yeah. Okay. So do both sides. And that feels really good and it stretches my my glute stretches kind big of just, just core twist stretch in yeah. a safe way to warm it up. Right. Before right. you start twisting and pick up stuff. Yes. And then um, 
what the other one that I like to do, and there's, there was one, what were you telling me? There was one, this one, because I usually just, I am very flexible and I have problems with my hip flexors. So a lot of times I'll just do what I can to kind of, you're talking about this one? Yeah. Yeah, and this is the one, so this is what I had been doing, which really didn't do a whole lot, a whole lot for me, but this is the one that she has shown me how to do. Yeah. And I am not good, you guys, about always having good form, so that's why I love having Johanna here, is she will tell me what I'm doing, and just the minor micro movements that you can do that really in, that Im improve the kind of benefit you get from each thing. So you're gonna have one foot up, this leg back, you're gonna shift your body weight forward, okay? And you should feel a big stretch in your hip flexor right here. Option to put your hands down if that feels better for you. Or if you want to send those arms up to the sky, you can look up, big reach through your armpits. That should feel good too. Again, focus is right here. I'll normally send it back to you and get the hamstring again just in this stretch. She's pretty flexible and can probably sit, yeah, all the way back on your heel. If not, you can just stay it right here. Stretch that out. And it's important to just modify these, you guys, any way you can. And a lot of times, Johanna obviously isn't here. This one, I'm at my, by that time, I'm doing this one on the floor. But when Johanna's not here, I, I may not do it exactly correctly, but if I feel like I'm really getting a good stretch, then I know I'm doing something kind of beneficial. And then, yeah. like I say, she always does the pretty kind of ballerina <laughs> move and looks so graceful when she does it, and I just look like the old middle-aged woman that I am. But nevertheless, I still get benefits from it. You can even add something like this to it where you're pulling down, squeezing your shoulder blades together, getting that back, and then send those arms back up, going through the motion. Yeah, it's very kind of Tai Chi-ish or whatever. And regardless of what your range of mobility is, just the basic acts of just movement are really helpful. And again, these just feel, feel really, really good. So this to me isn't a workout, this just feels good. Okay, now, one other one. my most recent injuries, those are for me now the most important ones to do because my most recent injury, when I had to go to the doctor, it was because I had problems with my hip flexors. And lest you think that it's always a good thing if you are extremely limber, it's not always a yeah. good thing because I just can't get a good stretch <laughs> sometimes. And, and so I have to sometimes get help to really stretch out my muscles. And sometimes I, Johanna was the one who explained this to me, sometimes I feel like I'm not real stable and it's because my muscles are just so flexible that they're kind of wig, they're kind of wiggly and they don't provide me with the, the stability that I need and that's why it's so important that I have, that I have good core strength. Now another one. Can I show one more? Uh, yes, absolutely. Okay, this is a figure four stretch. You can do this one on the bed too before you even get up. Um, you cross one ankle over this knee. You're gonna interlace your hands behind your hamstring and just pull it in towards you as this knee is pushing out away. Ooh, I can really feel that. Yeah, so you should feel it in this glute, in this hip um, area. I have hip problems, so this is one I do on the daily. You can do this one standing as well, but seated is a little bit easier, or laying down. One of my yeah. favorite things that I say if I've, if I've got a problem with my hips or my back, or whatever, I'll say, but I've had these ever since <laughs> I was young, so I don't feel necessarily. It's just because I'm getting old, a lot of these, your body has, is compromised in a certain way, and that's where you're going to injure yourself later. Yeah. So, so Johanna knows that she's got hip issues right now, so she'll be mindful of that as she ages. Oh, I feel old already. <laughs> oh, hardly. But you'll know to do those things for yourself. All right, what's the one you're gonna do next? Okay, now these are some other ones that I do, and I have done these again ever since I, I hurt my back, but, but Johanna knows she has been helping me with my posture, with my carriage and everything so that I can move gracefully through, through a space. 
and this also helps and particularly if you're doing lots of heavy lifting lots of big uh, things of gravel and by the way you guys Johanna very kindly helped me and she provided some information for my book on what kind of exercises to do before gardening season mm -hmm. and really we should we should stretch out and prepare for gardening season just like we would stretch out and prepare you told me this once if, yeah if if you're going to prepare for ski season I should prepare for gardening season it's one of the wisest things that you have ever told me so um, okay so these are the other ones so this is a tricep overhead stretch okay you're reaching this hand all the way down your back you should feel a big stretch through this arm here the back side is your tricep and that feels that feels good too okay And we're just, you're just, you told me to just kind of apply gentle, consistent pressure. I'm not pulsing. I'm not really pushing yeah. it or anything. As you feel yourself release and get a little bit less tight, you can push a little bit harder. And that feels really good. And then another one that I, that I was encouraged to do, I can't remember if it was you or someone else. Again, it was, but it was before gardening season is this which really improves your flexibility yeah this and is like a shoulder stretch yeah okay. put, put your arm inside that elbow send it all the way across your body and i have a, a good friend right now who just had soldier re shoulder replacement surgery and i think we think about having knee replacement hip replacement those kind of things but your shoulders, I know it was true for my mother-in-law, it was all, her shoulders were always an issue. And one thing that Johanna has helped me concentrate on recently, and one of the reasons I've been doing push-ups and things like that, is to really help mobilize and strengthen all of those muscles around my shoulder bones and my shoulder joints. Stuart's nodding. <laughs> I'll also loosen up the shoulders by just doing, I call them swimmers. You can do these standard, and standing, standing or seated. Yeah. And this makes us feel groovy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This makes us feel groovy. Yeah. And if we had on wide, you know, and you can wide do wide. arm circles back, yeah. reverse. You gotta do one of these with <laughs> Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like this. Okay, let's do this. <laughs> yeah. Like back in junior high. <laughs> now, I. <laughs> Johanna is so young, I have to sometimes. Get, we got to, uh, I have to give her some cultural lit literacy from back in the 60s and 70s. Okay, now what did you just do? You were doing this is this just another, again. just another twist. This feels good. Now, before, okay, so these, with the exception of the hip flexor stretches that we do, I do all of these before I even get out of bed. So I can still be kind of groggy. I may throw my leg over, it hits hubs or <laughs> whatever. But the nice thing is by doing these before I even get out of bed, I'm kind of waking myself up without even having to get off of my heating pad, <laughs> which for me is just just huge in the morning then the other one that i do immediately and johanna can show us some different ways to do this and by the way so many of you guys commented on this and i guess my question of the day is what kind of stretching exercises do you guys do every day regardless of the degree of mobility you have so uh, I know there's lots of you in your 20s and 30s that watch these videos, but there's also a number of you that are older like myself. You're in your 70s, 80s, and you're also doing stretches and exercises to help kind of lubricate your joints to get you going throughout the course of the day. So that's my question of the day. What kind of stretches do you do? Because I might want to add them to my routine. Now, the other one that I do first, first thing before I go down to get my coffee is... Quad, and quad stretch. So she's stretching, stretching all this out, quad muscle and those hip flexors as well. Yeah. You're pulling up with your arm back here. Try to keep that knee close to the other leg. You don't want to be out here. Keep it close. Pull up gently. 
Should feel a good stretch. And even if you can't touch your bum, yeah, you just go as far. You just go as far as you yeah. can. And if you have trouble even reaching behind you, you were telling me Ooh. the other day that if you're on the ground, mm -hmm. that you, you know you could do this. And if you couldn't reach, then you could get like a towel or a strap yeah. or, or something, and you could do it lying down. Mm, but those are long enough. Now, another one that my physical therapist, and first, I, I have not been doing these religiously until Johanna told me what to do. So another one that for some reason I hadn't incorporated it into my regular stretching routine, but it was one that my physical therapist told me to do, and that was kind of like, uh, what, what is this? Cobras. Cobras. Cobra, yeah. Okay, cobra. So press that more so your arms are all the way straight, if you can. She yeah. has a range of motion, but some people may not be able to. Relax your shoulders down. She likes this one because it's the reverse of what we do all day long. Slouching forward, so it's a little yeah. bit of the hyperextension back, stretching it out. And when you have a herniated disc, literally, stuff just kind of pops out of place. And this kind of forces it to stay in place. Now, the other one that I love that Johanna told me about. And after I do these, sometimes then... She'll send back into child's pose. It's just a nice resting pose to stretch it out. Yeah, it feels good. But yeah. then the other one that I love that Johanna taught me is... Superman? Yes. Yeah. She's fine like Superman. So you're raising up as far as you can up with your chest and arms up in the air and there's quads and legs up too. So just the middle of you is on the ground still, okay? And boy, you can feel this as a stretch everywhere. Now, if you can only make it up this far, you know what, that's great. Yeah. And next time, try to make it up a little bit yeah. farther and a little bit farther and every day work on, on how much further you can stretch yourself, yeah. I, should, I guess I would say. To make it a little easier, you can bend your arms, bend your arms back. Having your arms closer to you like this will be easier than having them out in front of you. You can pulse it, you can do all the way down reps. Um, show them swimmers out in front. You can swim it out. Well, yeah, yeah. Moving her legs up and down too. This is a more advanced version of this you would do. Working all these legs and glutes are on fire. Her back oh, yeah. is really and, tight and engaged. And, and I, you can really Her feel core. the part of my rear end, Johanna, point to where I can really feel that tight. Yeah, all through here. Core is really engaged. It's like a full body stretch. And even if you can't do a lot of those, yeah. you just do a few. And what I like about doing stretches is that it then kind of energizes me, I guess, to go and come down and get on the treadmill or work out with Johanna when Johanna gets here. And then by the time I get my coffee and stuff, I, I feel a little bit like I've gotten a head start on the day and that makes me feel good. And it was, again, I didn't even have to get out of bed. No. I'm still kind of groggy. I can lie there, think about what I need to do over the course of the day while I'm doing these stretches. and. And let me tell you, I guess the, the most important testimonial I can give to the efficacy of doing these is that when I don't do these, that's when I hurt my back again. Whether it's doing laundry or just lifting something or pruning something out in the garden, it's when I don't do these stretches that I really get into trouble. The other reason that I like doing these, and by the way, this is a Christmas present from Johanna. <laughs> she got me this wonderful <laughs> mat. But one thing that I, that I think is important for people to work on as we get older, and myself in particular, since I'm getting older, and hubs too, is just basic life skills about being able to get up and get down. I can show them. Yeah. Well, I don't know if I can do that. Uh, I'll try. But I'll try. But I can re I can remember the f how frightening it was when I would go home to help take care of my mom and dad. And my dad was 6'2", he was slender, but he was a big man, and when he fell and couldn't help himself get back up, 
that is really, really scary. So the ability, once we get down on the floor, to practice just getting back up in any way we can, I think is one of the best life skills you can get. And even if that means like every day, <laughs> getting down on the floor <laughs> and getting back up yeah. five times, I think it's just an important life skill. And if you have to have a little helper, then you have a little helper. If you don't have to have a little helper, then you don't. But we get out of the practice of doing it. Yeah. So what other kinds of easy, like occupational skills, would you say that we should practice as we begin to age, things that we take for granted until we realize all of a sudden we can't do them easily anymore? squatting to pick up things instead of hinging forward and rounding your back and picking something up from far away and keep it close to you you pick it up which um, is by the way one of the things you talked about yeah, in our book yeah so let, in fact let's demonstrate that so yeah. let's yeah. pretend yeah. that this yeah. is really really heavy yeah okay so tell me the right way and the wrong way to pick this up okay so the wrong way would be I'm far away from it I'm just gonna reach for it on my back not really bending or squatting and raise it up from there. Okay, that's like the hardest version to pick it up. Um, something better would be I'm gonna situate my legs on either side. It's gonna be the center of my feet. Okay, I'm gonna squat as far as I can, back tight. Okay, I'm not gonna round it, and I'm just gonna lower down and pick it up right here. And okay. she bent, and she kept her legs yeah. pretty much bent the entire time. The other thing that I can hear my my mom, I can even hear yeah. my mom saying this: "Engage your core." Yeah, yeah. Engage your core so that when you're coming back up and and that you're kind of coming up with. Yeah, you're squeezing those legs, those glutes, those quads to yeah. help you lift it up. So using your legs yeah. to power you instead of your back. Yeah. And the other thing is, is if it's beyond your weight bearing capacity, don't do it at all. Yeah. Get somebody else to do it like Stuart <laughs> or Johanna yeah. or anyone who can help you. It's one of the reasons I have a two wheeler in the garden is because some things are just too heavy. And that's when, when you, you do something stupid. Yeah. You really, you really do something stupid. The other two things I would say is balance. As you age, your balance tends to get worse. So just stand on one foot. See if you can do this for 30 seconds, okay? If you could do this, try to close your eyes, okay? Your oh, eyes I, I are can, a big... I, I cannot do it yeah. with closing my eyes. Your eyes are a big proprioception, and it gives you a lot of balance skills that you, didn't, you can't do with your eyes closed as well. And try the other leg. Yeah. Do this every day. It's a good yeah. balance and for you. The other thing I would say also in addition to helping me with my core, that's the most important thing I asked you to help me in the past year is to yeah. improve yeah. improve my balance. Yeah. To, so that because I again I found that I was just unstable and and because my muscles are so loose, yeah. I just feel like I didn't have good balance and I didn't have good stability. You got better at split squats. And I have gotten better. Yes, I, there are certain ones that I really hate, and most of them that I hate, like these split squats, are because I feel unstable. And Johanna has helped me with that. And one tip that she always teaches me is to focus on a certain spot right across from you, just like the ice yeah. skaters would do, I guess, is to focus on a certain spot and just use that as yeah. kind of your as focal kind point. Of, yeah, yeah, as your focal point. Yeah. So we could go on and on. Please let me know if you guys like these little tips. Um, as a lifestyle kind of thing, this isn't a <laughs> fancy gym. Poor Johanna, she comes down here into the bowels of my old, old 1932 house. This is my basement. There is a little gas heater here, so we turn it on before we come down here. Um, we've got a treadmill down here, but Johanna has helped me equip it, equip it with things that I need. And one of the next uh, next ones that we'll do is some of the bare bones equipment, inexpensive equipment that she has helped me outfit our little home gym with that has made our workouts, I think, a little bit easier in the era of COVID when we're not going out. I used to go to a gym pretty regularly. While I was regular about it, I really never pushed myself. And now I have the executioner. <laughs> I have the executioner here who helps who helps push me and, and we can gossip simultaneously. So uh, should we close with me trying to see if I can stand yes. up with yeah. my legs crossed? Yeah. I don't know if I could do this. So Stuart, we're gonna do this if I can't do this. <laughs>
This is her doing. She thought she wanted to do this one day, so she tried it with no hands to try to get up. Can I do this? Yeah, you do it. Up, 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 up. Almost. <laughs> Let me try it again. Let me see if at first you don't succeed. And one, of, this is one of the things where I really have to engage my core. Yeah. And think about it. Yeah. Get a little momentum going. Up, uh, up, 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 up. Almost. Obviously, I need to keep working. <laughs> I can do that before Christmas. Yeah. So see, yeah. just the period of time when I haven't been yeah. doing it as much. But I promise you, the next time we talk, I will be able to do it. No, no hands. No hands. So there you go, guys. I hope some of this stuff helps you. It's not fancy. I'm no expert. She is the expert. But you guys have asked me a million times how I stay slim and stay in shape and continue to garden into my dotage. And this is, this is how I do it with uh, lots of good stretching and the help <laughs> of some good friends. <laughs> <laughs> Voila, I did it. And now I will go into my outfit of the day, such as it is. My top is, I think it's Madewell via Nordstrom Rack. Um, my britches are just joggers. We used to call these sweatpants. Now we call, yeah. we call them joggers. That's one of the kind of things that Johanna has taught Am I me. in this? Yeah, you're going to be in this. So this is, uh, these are joggers. I think I got these off of Amazon. Some of my other workout stuff I get through Johanna. Ooh, I'm out of breath. Um, and these are just Nike tennis shoes. And my earrings were gifts from my sisters. Oh, my outfit of the day. Um, I think this is just a set from Sam's, the shirt. These are my Zaya leggings. I sell a workout brand. So they're very bright, vibrant, but blue and she wears them nicely <laughs> yeah so i sell them if you guys are interested you can comment in the comments and then just new balance tennis shoes yeah and uh johanna is a graduate student and what degree are you working on i'm in speech language pathology school i did my undergrad in kinesiology so i work as a personal trainer and certified so yeah so she part -time. yeah so she i'm busy <laughs> she is ve she is very very busy but she makes time for me and hubs and we have kind of adopted her <laughs> yeah. since i don't have any daughters of my own i kind of have have adopted uh johanna and she she lets me bug her so okay guys till next time <laughs>